Rich Hill looked decent for the first time. Dowry Moretta was not money for the first time. The offense goes from one night, the dramatic walk-off three-run blast, to absolutely nothing the very next afternoon. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or football. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Steelers where you found this. Astros 7, Pirates 0. Not really a whole lot to say about that. In fact, I pretty much think I covered, you know, like the entire event in that little intro there. But the reason that I spat that information out the way I did is I have a feeling that's what you're going to see this summer. Uh, There's been a lot of questions, especially since O'Neill Cruz went down as to how this team might respond. I I guess some of that's mentally for me. Most of it's just, do you have the players? Do you have the hits, the total bases, the RBIs, the power, the steals, Uh, even what he brings you at short? So far, if we're being real here, the most prominent sign that Cruz has been missing has been in the field. Been a couple of big errors committed out there. Maybe he would have committed them too, but maybe not. He's starting to get pretty decent out there. I look at this roster and this overall team composition as being something that's going to get you a whole lot of what you just saw. And I mean, actually, let's take it all the way back to Cincinnati. Because you saw that uplifting opener they had at Great American Ballpark, lost a couple. They go to Boston, you think they're going to get belted. Instead, they sweep the Red Sox, come home, have the super dramatic home opener, and everybody loves Kutch and Brian Reynolds with the six RBIs. They kind of quietly split the next two with the White Sox, lose to the Astros in the opener of that series. But then, boom, Jiwon Bay comes through after a blown lead. And then the one yesterday, I, you know, when we talked about preseason predictions for this team's overall record, some of you will recall that one of the countless reasons I hate making them is you never can predict a massive variable being thrown into the equation. So far already... The Pirates have had two, and no, I will not let anyone forget that J.T. Brubaker is the other the day after it was announced that he had Tommy John surgery. Don't kid yourself. That hurts, even if it resulted in Johan Oviedo getting a chance and it results in Oviedo taking every bit of that chance to heart and pitching as well as he has in his couple of starts you still miss having a major league pitcher who provides legitimate depth. So they've already had two of these things. A member, an anointed known member of their rotation and their most talented player. So what do you do with the predictions? I don't know. That's why I'm going to keep referring to post-cruise or post-brewbaker. Post-cruise slash brewbaker and try to figure out where this team is headed. And in the case specifically of Cruz, since he's expected to be back, how do you keep your head above water in the interim? This looks like the pattern. You will see the Pirates line up with certain pitchers, as we saw over the weekend, as we definitely saw at Fenway Park, and they'll make some noise. Because these players, especially the younger guys, aren't who they are or didn't climb up through the minors because they're nothing. Uh, Also, obviously, for the veterans, Kutch and Carlos Santana and G-Man Choi, this isn't their first time around. So you're going to have certain pitchers that they feast on and they have their day. But you're also going to have these. And what do you do with that? Do you build up excitement? Do you look at the standings? Do you say, whatever, we'll get them next year? That's up to you. As always, I never tell people how to feel. But from my own standpoint, I'm sticking with the head above water. That's that's how I'm looking at it. If this team can 
do this, hang around the 500 mark. I mean, they're over that now, obviously, but hang around that 500 mark. They've got four, count them, one, two, three, four at Bush Stadium beginning tonight. That place hasn't exactly been kind to them. So maybe they'll be at or below 500 by the time it's over. What you have to do if you're this team is hang your hat, not to put pressure on the kid. His health and his long-term future comes first. But you have to just hope that he can come back and make a difference down the stretch. I am of the firm belief, and I'll probably only get more demonstrative with this stance as the summer goes along that you can't have a mid-season punt if this team hovers along at that water level. I don't see anyone, including the opponent tonight, as being someone that's going to run away with the division. I know the Brewers are off to a good start. I know the Cardinals are exactly what they are. I don't see somebody, you know, getting up to 95, 100 wins. And I think you could realistically see this team, here comes that term again, hang around, buy time for Cruz, capitalize on the opening that's left by Cruz to see someone else take those plate appearances and rise up. And no, not Mark Mathias, a real live prospect. Do that, level off, level off the bad with the good. Somehow, some way. If that means straightening out the way Hill did yesterday, reasonably, again, two runs over six innings, that's that's a decent outing against the world champs. If you're Jack Sawinski and you really get off to a rough start, you got to start belting them out like he did a couple of days ago. If you're Rodolfo Castro or David Bednar or Moretta from yesterday who takes an occasional... Uh, punch to the jaw, you've got to pop right back up. Uh, resiliency is a term that's getting thrown around an awful lot in that clubhouse. It starts, meaning the usage of that term, with Derek Shelton. comes from his mouth an awful lot. But it's got to be put into practice. They can't get too down whenever they lose or even have a losing streak. And maybe you could argue that they can't get too up whenever they're feeling it. Get the lunch pail, go to work. And if Cruz comes back, we can start talking about getting excited again. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. comes from John, and it's kind of off the beaten path, certainly nothing to do with the Astros series. He says, I thought this was the 137th season of the Pittsburgh Baseball Club that was founded in 1887, but in recent columns, you've been referring to it as the 142nd season. What did I miss? John, the more appropriate question would be, what did I miss in not having listened for many years now to John Draker? a local historian whose work you've possibly been reading on piratesprospects.com for a number of years. Uh, Terrific writer, uh, a, a terrific reporter, but more than any of those things, he is quite the historian when it comes to this club. And he doesn't rely just on existing material. He will go and get his fingernails dirty and finding stuff out. And by that, I mean finding an article that's two paragraphs long on the back of the Pittsburgh Sun-Telegraph from 18-whatever. Uh, he's he's something, okay? And John had been, in his very polite way, 
asking me, not telling me, not admonishing me, but asking me to at least consider some of the evidence that he had that the Pirates have in fact been a major league franchise and continuously so, unlike Cincinnati, since 1882. The Reds, in contrast, claim 1869, but it was actually a different rendition of the franchise that ended up going somewhere else or folding or something like that. But they're definitely not the Reds, uh, a team that's been continuous since 1869. The Pirates actually are continuous from 1882 onward. They didn't join the National League until 1887 which is the reference that the team makes. But I can tell you unequivocally that the team hasn't really done its homework on this, whereas John has. John has looked into the records, the sales, the exchanges, the times that the Pirates joined a league, why they joined it, what was the name of that league, what did that league end up becoming, what was it folded into, which used to happen a lot in the formative days of the national pastime. And he has reached, and and anybody, by the way, who has followed John's work and seen his evidence has reached, because I've never heard an exception to this, the conclusion that the Pirates were born in 1882. Now, they, of course, went through some of their own uh, movements and machinations and so forth, and the big moment came when Barney Dreyfus Uh, the real original owner uh, of the Pirates, the founder of the World Series, my goodness, who challenged the Boston team uh, to play them in a best of, I believe it was a best of eight. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that, which sounds ridiculous, but I believe it was a best of eight in the very first World Series in 1903, which went to the Red Sox, but the Pirates of 1900 to 1902 were easily, and I mean by a mile, the three best teams this franchise has ever had. Look at some of their records. They're, they're out of this world. Uh, I believe, and I'm going off the top of my head here, so forgive me if I miss by a win or a loss, that the 1900 team, 1902 team was 102 and 36. Think about that. <laughs> okay. That's like losing once a week. But Dreyfus brought along with him from the Louisville franchise, Hannes Wagner and some other players, and he merged that into uh, the Pittsburgh team. The Pirates, of course, didn't become known as the Pirates until, wow, we can do this stuff some other time. But you you get the idea here. Uh, If you want to check out John's work, uh, again, he's at PiratesProspects.com, which is run by my friend Tim Williams. Uh, John's written work is there. John's done lots of articles on this. Uh, I'm giving 100% of the credit to John, and I'd rather you go read his stuff to find out why I do, just so that he can get the full credit from you as well. I am sticking this year for the first time with 142 years uh, because I trust in the man's work. Uh, Doesn't mean I'm official either, but I'm also not flying in the face of what he's done either. I appreciate the question. Not everything has to be about the day-to-day stuff. I really do. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates, and we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 